Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So a lesbian event at Sydney's upcoming Mardi Gras festival has been disassociated because of the presence of LGBT YouTuber Ariel Scarcella. Ariel is a lesbian and her channel focuses on women's and LGBT issues. However, I should clarify, she is absolutely not an SJW. Now, you'd think as a lesbian who runs a YouTube channel with over 630,000 subscribers, Ariel would be the perfect international guest to grace the stage, but apparently not. Apparently, despite her thoughtful discussions of LGBT issues, Ariel has some wrong opinions about trans people, which drew the ire of one Johnny Valkyrie from Brisbane, a trans man, so female to male, who was also a drag queen. Side note, surely somebody who is biologically female but identifies as a man but still has all their top and bottom lady parts would not qualify as a drag queen simply because that is surely cheating. Every biologically male drag queen everywhere should be absolutely outraged at the grossly unfair advantage this biologically feminine person has at looking, well, feminine. Just saying. May this woman Win. Anyway, this petition made a number of demands, which included pulling Ariel from the panel and if not for Mardi Gras to pull sponsorship and endorsement of the event. Eventually, the petition did its job, and while the event wasn't cancelled, it is now no longer associated with Mardi Gras, which is a shame. So what are these allegedly evil transphobic views that Ariel has? Well, as with pretty much every other accusation of some sort of phobia that comes from an SJW, it's simply that she has refused to toe the party line. Ariel is not at all transphobic. I've watched a lot of her videos over the past couple of days, and she is actually very sympathetic to trans people. She's featured more trans people than most other people on her channel than anyone, including featuring the lovely Blair White. She's very aware of trans issues, and as she said to the Post Millennial, she has no issue with people being transgender. None. It's just a few trans ideas that she disagrees with, which, granted in the context of LGBT activism, is a mortal sin. Hence the reaction of Johnny Valkyrie et al. As to the trans ideas she takes issue with, there are three of them. First, Ariel wants people to acknowledge that trans women are not female. She's perfectly happy to say that trans women are women, sure, but objects to those people who try to blur the line of biological sex and to those who insist that there's actually no such thing as a biological male or a biological female. Listen to the scientists. Second, Ariel believes that self-identification, that is, I think I'm trans, therefore I am trans and don't need any kind of surgery or medical approval to legally change my gender, is dangerous and harmful to both women and trans women. One of the videos Ariel made that the trans lobby has taken issue with is called Men Identify as Women and Escape Prison, It's Happening. In this video, she outlines a number of cases where men who have been convicted of crimes against women and children have identified as women to either get out of jail or to be moved to a women's prison, for example, Karen White. She also talks about the infamous Jessica Yaniv, who sued a number of women for refusing to wax Yaniv's still male private parts. Check out the video description for full details. In other words, Ariel says self-identification enables predatory men to game the system and allows them to further prey on women. Now, not only is this obviously harmful to women, Ariel points out that it is also harmful to trans women because in the eyes of the public, they get lumped into that same category as all those predatory men, which is, you know, hardly fair to your average trans woman just trying to get on with her life. Third, and this is the biggest thought crime she has committed, Ariel asks that lesbians not be pressured or shamed into having relations with trans women, that is, women presenting people who still have male genitalia. According to Ariel, there is at the moment an enormous amount of pressure on lesbians to date and be intimate with trans women, regardless of the fact that a lot of them don't have the uh, lesbian preferred equipment, so to speak. Now, this would seem contrary to the entire concept of lesbiandom, I would have thought, but apparently not in the eyes of LGBT activists. Lesbians who refuse and talk openly about their preference for the female anatomy are called transphobes, bigots, hateful, and TERFs, which stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. Now, a lot of lesbians actually don't agree with Ariel and those lesbians who think like her and are perfectly happy to throw their lesbian comrades under the bus by hurling some of the absolute worst of all abuse at them. 
However, the resentment that a lot of lesbians and actually a lot of women generally feel at the fact that biological heterosexual men are passing themselves off as women and not only claiming a lesbian identity but entering women's spaces that were hard fought for, for by second wave feminists is an undeniably valid point to make. It seems to be a sort of LGBT patriarchy at work. And it is that LGBT patriarchy, along with Ariel's situation, that inspired me to make this video. Over the past few years, in which I have been observing constantly and in great detail intersectionality, identity politics and social justice warriors, I have noticed an alarming trend. Well, I've noticed a lot of alarming trends, but this one's a real doozy. This trend is that lesbians within the LGBT community really do seem to get the short end of the stick a lot of the time, particularly when it comes to all things transgender. After all, as Ariel observes, and I think she's pretty correct, it's only ever lesbians who seem to get publicly shamed and pressured and insulted for saying they'd rather not have relations with people with certain genitalia. Gay men rarely seem to get shamed for talking about how much they love the male anatomy, and they are also rarely seem to get pressured into sleeping with trans men who still have their female anatomy. And while there are a lot of activists out there who say that this is all just a myth and that these lesbians are just bigots and, you know, turfs and, you know, making it all up, there is a uh, reasonable amount of commentary out there, considering how niche it actually is to be trans, talking about how it is, in fact, bigoted to prefer particular body parts. In the context of lesbians, there's even a name for it. The cotton ceiling. Not to mention, of course, the self-proclaimed social justice experts, many of which are not actually trans, who flood social media with their virtue signaling and hurl abuse at lesbians when they say, hey, nothing against trans people, but I like my ladies with, you know, lady parts. So why is it that lesbians seem to cop such a disproportionately large amount of pressure and abuse for daring to express that they would rather not sleep with people who, remember, were originally heterosexual biological males? Could it be because lesbians are in fact women? Could there be some actual legit misogyny at play here? I mean, I get accused by feminists quite a lot of insisting that misogyny and sexism no longer exist, and of course that's totally untrue. I've never said that, and of course there are still some men out there who don't like women. However, it is possible that those feminists are actually pointing to the wrong culprit in some cases. They talk about sexism always in the context of straight white men's apparent inherent misogyny and their apparent indulgence in their so-called male privilege. But nobody ever seems to mention the crap that lesbians seem to cop within the LGBT activist community for having the wrong opinion on women's issues. This abuse comes often from gay men, or people who, while they have transitioned into womanhood, were formerly heterosexual men. And let's be real, there is a large amount of misogyny among some gay men. They will openly express repulsion at women's bodies in front of women, calling them disgusting, ugly, undesirable, etc. I have heard it all before. I once had a girlfriend who lived with two gay men and she used to call me in tears because of how terrible they had made her feel about herself and her body, saying stuff to her that would be called gross misogynistic harassment or abuse had it come from a heterosexual man. Then there's the way gay men objectify and fetishize women like Kylie Minogue, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, and every other lady dubbed a gay icon. Then there's that thing that happens when straight women go into gay bars. Now, ladies watching this video, have you ever been to a gay club, felt a hand slap you on the butt or grope your chest, turned around to face the culprit, and been met with, I'm gay so it doesn't count? Yep. Me too. Now that's not to say that all gay men are misogynists, gosh no, of course most aren't. Gay men and women of all persuasions have wonderful relationships most of the time. That does not change the fact, however, that when it comes to lesbians who are biological women versus trans women who are biological men and have often been gay before coming out as trans, pretty much 100% of the time the needs and wants of trans women are put squarely ahead of those of lesbians who happen to have the wrong opinions. Gay men simply do not face the same opposition within the LGBT lobby, and that to me is grossly unfair. Now aside from anything else, it is a well-known fact that the relationship between lesbians and gay men has historically been rather unfriendly. Here's what second wave radical feminist and noted turf Julie Bindle has to say on the subject. 
The new McCarthyism has become firmly embedded within gay male culture. Many feminists have long been critical of gay men dressing and performing the worst parodies of femininity, but when we have complained, few took notice. When I, in the early 1980s, heckled a drag act at a gay club in Leeds, I was beaten up and thrown down the stairs by gay men while the bouncers stood and laughed. However, in 2015, drag was banned by Free Pride Glasgow because transgender people do not wish to be parodied. This is Orwellian in the extreme. Actual women are not allowed to be offended by men using nasty misogynistic stereotypes to play the part of a woman for entertainment in case men who claim to be women, but who are actually men, get offended. But women, when we object, are transphobic. Perhaps Alice could pass me the looking glass? Also, if you can hear a noise, it literally just started raining and I think it's going to storm. Could it be, maybe, that lesbians are the victims of a bizarre kind of male privilege that permeates the LGBT lobby? After all, if the needs of biological men are placed above those of biological women on the intersectional oppression pyramid, the only conclusion we can draw is that among LGBT activists, men are considered more important than women. And that, bizarrely, so many LGBT women who are always avowed intersectional feminists not only don't notice this insidious male privilege, but buy into it. Trans women getting upset and angry that biological females don't want to sleep with them and then playing the victim because of it is the ultimate form of male sexual entitlement. It's the same way that incels think. That is, women don't find me attractive and that's their fault and they should be shamed and punished for it. It's perverse, it's misogynistic, and it's absolutely daft that all women don't realize it. As Miranda Yardley, who was a trans woman and wise to this stuff, wrote for After Ellen, as comically ridiculous as it may seem of Zinnia Jones to be talking about his girl appendage, or Riley Dennis suggesting it is cis-sexist to be attracted to people with only one type of genital, or that your dating preferences are an act of hate, don't be fooled by the deeply rooted homophobia which lies at the heart of what these people are trying to do, which is to make it unacceptable for women to be able to set their own intimate and sexual boundaries. This is a viciously toxic form of men's sexual rights activism that has managed to rebrand and reframe itself as a civil rights movement. Now, am I saying that all trans women are closeted, entitled, heterosexual men? Of course not. That's ridiculous and completely untrue. I have nothing against trans people. You do you. Go forth and be happy. What I'm saying is that the entitlement that some trans women and some gay men feel to women's bodies and the pressure that they are putting on women to sleep with people they don't want to sleep with is about as regressive as the regressive left gets, let alone the fact that so many feminist activists are enabling and encouraging this male entitlement. It's like they were so keen to jump on the bandwagon and be trans allies that they just didn't think it through. That, or they're secretly terrified that if they speak out, they'll suffer the same fate as the likes of Ariel Scarcella. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.